Miss Casey Carter here, and I'm with St. John. No O. No How o. you living? I like this. This feels like CNN. Just Miss Casey Carter here with. Reporting live at Cube 93 in the like AT&T. In the AT&T building? Sound Whatever. studio. Here we are. Can we get some class? Nobody's oh yeah, clap? give you it up. Goddamn there clap. Go. I want to feel beautiful this morning. What time is it? Is it morning? No, I don't even know what time it, it is. No, it is 1.30. Damn, I don't wake up until I, you know what? You from Brooklyn too, so it's like 4.30. That's true, but I've been on a loop around yeah. the world a little bit, so I don't you know You have what's going been. On. Well, let me run down this uh, resume real quick for people who aren't familiar with mm -hmm. you. Um, you grew up between Brooklyn and Guyana. Mm -hmm. You come from a family of nine. You have some very notable writing credits, including Usher, Jadena, Joey Badass, just to name a few. Sounds sexy. And I then, like <laughs> um, fast forward to now, you're on your second headlighting tour. Yeah. Your second? It's my second one in America. Okay. Congratulations yeah. Thank you on so much. everything. Yeah. How's tour life been? Ignorant. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing on your Instagram. Yeah, we do a lot of interesting things. Yeah. You're you have a lot of fun. Yes. Like living your best life. When you look that up, you'll see St. John's picture. Absolutely. Right next to one dread and one cell around boot. Mm -hmm. I would have lost the other one, so I wouldn't have made it into the picture. <laughs> well, you're gonna be wrapping up your nineteen city tour, um, in at Rolling Loud this weekend. Yeah, that's this weekend. Like yeah. it's just this is it. The tour is done. Yeah. I got there's so much more I plan on doing. I didn't do it now. Well, you got a whole week to get things. Well, no shit. It's fucking Wednesday. Well, it's, it's Wednesday. Oh my god. Today's yeah. Wednesday. See, I'm lost now. Fam, I'm lost. Yeah. Yeah. So it's coming up. You got a couple days. Are you excited for that though? I Rolling am. Loud Rolling in LA. Loud is crazy. I mean, yeah, it's the end of the year. Yeah. Cardi B's going to be there. That's yeah. going to be a big... Everybody's a Rolling yeah. Loud this year. Yeah. Everybody and their mother's cousin is going to be a Rolling Loud. How excited are you to be it's performing gonna be lit. and being on that lineup with all those it's people? It's going to be really cool. I got some ideas. Yeah. I'm, I feel like I could just say what I'm going to do. Can I just say what I'm going to do? Just... Give us a little bit so that your fans don't get the full surprise. Well, I like strippers, right? No, yes, we're definitely right? going to talk about that. And that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. I've graduated it. Oh, I've taken it. I've taken it a step further. Rolling loud. Mm -hmm. Let's go for. Let's be more progressive. Okay. Are we talking about inclusive. like Cardi B, Coachella? I didn't see it. Oh, okay. She had the dancers on the poles and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All that's right. Cool. That's oh. That sounds really cool. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm talking about. Okay. How we doing it? More progressive. Okay. Well, I just let your mind wonder. How much further can? You know what? I don't want anybody are to guess. Are shooting a porno out there? Oh. <laughs> Did I just give you an idea? <laughs> Director St. John. I would direct the porn. Only Snoop has done something like that, right? No, Young M.A. Young M.A. directed a porn? Yep, she shot it with um, Pornhub. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think it was purely, like about her life. Purely for educational purposes? Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at this purely. Yeah. There was, there was like porn yeah, stuff Yeah, so you can shoot one next. And she likes girls. Yeah. So it was like girls on girls mm -hmm. on girls? It was like about her, a little depiction of her life. And it showed things? I didn't get to watch it. Don't now I'm going to go watch it. No, I, I haven't seen it. it, but I'm going to go watch it. Let me it. see your browser history right uh, now. Oh, you can, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't seen it, but I'm going to go watch it and I'll All let right. you know what I thought. And you got to we'll just gotta come back it. together and I like that. We regroup. Put our thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so being from Brooklyn, the hustle of the drive, I got to ask, if Brooklyn had a Mount Rushmore, who would you put on your Mount Rushmore? Hope. Okay. One. Big. Okay. Um... Jordan's from Brooklyn, so. What? I didn't know that. I think Michael Jordan's from Brooklyn. Am I tripping? I made that up. Did I make that up? I, I decided. So. I decided Michael Jordan's <laughs> from Brooklyn. He's going to my mom, Rob. What you going to do? You going to tell me no? You going to fight me? Nobody can't fight me. Jordan. And then? Uh, how many people? It's like five. Four. Is it four? Four. Who? Yeah, but Pac got co-opted by the uh, West Coast, right? I went to Seattle. This is my mom, Rush. He would be if there's like... All right, cool. But there's more. Is it Basquiat? Is Basquiat from? Uh, well, New York is New what York. New York is what happened for him. Yeah. Denzel's from um, New Bro York. Oh, is he? Is I, he from Brooklyn? Don't have me making things I know, up. Come we're on. Over here, there's women like, in this room. Help me out. People. Michael Jordan's from Brooklyn. Wow. That's what I thought. Okay. Rami, you trash. So we had three. Right, and then. But I, don't take away what we got. We earned it. <laughs> so Biggie. <laughs> Biggie J. Denzel's from Mount Vernon, New York. Oh. You yeah. said Brooklyn, though, right? Mm-hmm, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Push is from uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. you, no, he is. He's from he the was Bronx. Born. Oh, the Bronx. He's from the Bronx, you hype beast. 
Why would this is the one question he asked? I don't care. Yes, uh, let's leave the fourth one out. How I about Angela Yee? Yee? I think I she's like, a Is that a plug? That she just, <laughs> that was I a, love Angela Yee. That was a lot. You know, we need a woman representative up there. I think it's, why can't my Mount Rushmore be mine? Oh, let's, okay. You're, okay, <laughs> no, because he wants to co-op my Mount Rushmore. Okay. Tell me about your Mount Rushmore. Um, from you're from where exactly? I'm from Seattle. From Seattle. But I was born in the Bay, so let's just bring it back to the Bay. Wow. You yeah. Just how long you been in Seattle? Though? I've been I've been here since I was three. So come on, fam. My whole life. Then you better make a Seattle Mount Rushmore. All right. So Casey Carter is on yes. there. Uh, we got to throw Bill Gates on there. Okay. Money Lynch, just because of what he did for Seattle, and then Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. That and then we're gonna head. add a fifth head and we're gonna put Jimi Hendrix on there. Jimmy's from Seattle? Mm hmm. That's lit. Yeah. I applaud that. Yeah, Seattle Very has some up. good musical roots. I didn't even know that. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, you, you know learned. what? You know what? Foxy's in my Mount Rushmore. Oh, there we Foxy. go. Repping, repping for the ladies. Foxy's fire. <laughs> Foxy's <laughs> fire. All right. Foxy's fire. And that's controversial because it's like Kim on Foxy, but first name is Foxy. Remember Broken Silence? She went in on that record. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, look at that. All right, I want to talk about the good stuff now because right. I feel like getting to know you, you're like, a, like you really appreciate the art form known as the strippers. Yeah. Like you appreciate I do. it. I very much. Um, so let me know what the best city for strip clubs is. That's unfair because I haven't done the world tour of strip clubs yet. Okay. So I'd be mislabeling somewhere that, you know, like automatically somebody would say uh, Atlanta mm -hmm. or they would say Houston. Although we ain't even really get to see the strippers in Houston. Uh, well, that you experienced. That I've so, experienced. So far. The best strippers. I would say Atlanta. Atlanta? Yeah, I'd say Atlanta. Okay. Although I love New York strippers when, when they had Sue's Rendezvous or they mm -hmm. had um, Sin City. Mm -hmm. I love a Dominican stripper. I'm like, oh, what's okay. up? She's like, I'm just here to... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you some lie. I'll tell you some lie. And I like it. I'm only here for three months. Me too. <laughs> I love it. You be lost. Man, I like all the lot. Tell me. I'm beautiful. <laughs> You're the most beautiful man I've ever met. Oh, no? Me? Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I believe okay. it. I believe that because I want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to. All right. Best strip club you've been to? I like... I like Follies. Follies in Atlanta? Yeah, I like Follies. Yeah. yeah. I like Follies at 2 o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. on a Wednesday. Okay. I don't Why, know if that makes so me a degenerate. It? There's just less competition in there. But, but are the girls just No, nah, the girls great? are fantastic. Okay. They're consistent through the day. Okay. It's just less thirsty niggas. Okay. Yeah. Daniel Caesar wrote his last, his latest song was inspired by Follies wow. on, on a Tuesday. My latest life. It's been inspired by Follies. By Follies? Okay. Back in the day, there used to be a lot of um, notable strippers, like a Gigi Maguire, China, all those girls. Um, is there a goat of dancers? Oh, in your no, eyes? I don't know. I can't you participate don't know the names. Yeah, there's so many now, yeah. so it's so hard, but. Yeah, like that, celebrating the mm -hmm. top stripper, like the Mount Rushmore strippers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I couldn't help okay. you with that. <laughs> all right, so um, what were you seeing growing up that inspired the love for all the fashion? I grew up in New York, right? Uh -huh. So I had to be a kid. Look, look, you come outside. I was a kid when my mom bought the when the Jordan like 11s, or, or, yeah, the 11s mm -hmm. came out or the 13s came out. Originally, not yeah. the, not the multiple times they've been. Nah, coming for sure. Out. When like, yeah, because I was a kid. I was a kid kid when they came out, and um, my mom went and bought the Converse that looked like the Jordans. Okay. Killed my whole youth. Spent the next 10 years trying to recover from that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. As a result, you just develop a certain knack, a certain mm -hmm. acumen for looking cool and wanting to do cool things. Because that's how, that's your first statements. Mm -hmm. You leave yeah. the house, you, before you opened your mouth, you said some of what you wore. You got to tell people how you were feeling that day, what you thought of yourself that day, what you thought of the world that day. I like um, that. So I utilize that. Yeah. It's another It's another information portal, mm -hmm. right? If you don't say anything, somebody could read you, like from a distance. Like that's Andy the Degenerate over there. Look at him. He got his hype beast <laughs> ones over there, his tattoo head and his blonde streaks. <laughs> like, right? And he's probably on Pornhub. You know how he's feeling. How's the uh, you Young M.A. thing? Yeah, how's the Young M.A. Uh, documentary? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I, the Christian Sex Club, you're doing like a really good job at promoting it. So Am I? I just wear it because yeah. it feels good. I, I mean, how's that going? I'm sure it's not merch. No, it's, it's not it's merch. It's clothing yeah, it's that you're brand. selling. Yeah. yeah, it's your brand. Yeah. So how's that been for you? It's, quite, it's been fantastic. It's, yeah. not, it's impossible to keep it in stock, mm -hmm. which is like a new thing, a new concept for mm -hmm. me. Because we've been on the road for, uh, well, we've been marching towards this for like, like two years, right? It's been a work in progress for that long with this, with Collection One and putting out the new project and mm -hmm. Christian Sex Club, just different like facets of what we want to do, different ideas. So to have it physically, come here, touch it, feel it. Feel it, enjoy that. Yeah, that's nice. It looks great. It's fair, it look. And yeah. this is an XL, so this ain't yeah. fitting my slim body yeah. the way it's supposed to. I just want it to feel cozy. Mm -hmm. But it's incredible just to be able to do it. Like you have a brand and you're an artist, no merch or anything no, like no, that. No, no, like, no. I don't believe in merch. I yeah. believe merch is the cheap disposable thing that you get at a concert. I believe that. That they print on a $4 t-shirt and mm -hmm. they sell it to you for $35. I don't want to wear that. Yeah. That shit itches my skin. So you're making stuff that you would wear. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Wearing, I'm making things that I would wear. And okay. I like cool brands. Yeah. I'm a kid that came from streetwear and I came from high fashion in one regard or the next. Like, yeah. you know, the aspirational fashion, you see some Gucci shoes mm -hmm. and you're like, I want those mm -hmm. because they say something yeah. about me. But I wanted to make something that was at a price point that was respectable, that you could still afford it, but it had the value there. Usually yeah. when something is, um, when something is of a more affordable value, it's usually a little cheaper in quality. Okay. But I don't believe in that. So I made quality at an affordable cost. Any collaborations with any other brands in the future? Yeah, but no, we could talk about it right now. Oh, right now. okay, that must I mean, be let nice. Let me be private. I want to be private. I can't tell you everything. Okay, be, okay. Yeah, make now, it work for it. Second day. He's talking about you, slender. First of all, you are on the ground flexing, literally. How are me? you so? Yeah, no, you are not slender. Little old me. Yeah, no, no little old me. Go to the gram right now and check out them thirst trap pictures. I'm just talking about my inner hoe is coming out. It's true. If you do, it be creeping out. Okay, all the so time. do you have a nickname for your inner hoe? I don't. I should. Oh, you need a name. Why did the first name that just pop in my head was Sheila? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first name? All right, Sheila. My inner hoe's name is Sheila. There we go. Is that appropriate? Sheila the inner hoe. Yeah. Definitely. There you go. My inner hoe's name is Sheila. Boom, we birthed yeah. it right there. Yeah, yeah, you caught it. See, I Okay. Don't. How are you staying so fit? You know what? You I can't, just, don't tell me you're not working out. I don't. Please. Oh. I swear, I don't want to lie to you. I, I don't. This. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to make it impossible for anybody else, but I eat right. Okay. I don't oh, you're drink. You're a pescatarian. I'm a pescatarian. How I long have you drink. been a pescatarian? Like four years. Okay. I was that for the whole 11 months this year. How'd that go? It was great. My cool. skin was great drop some weight that like stayed off and then like this month I've been eating meat just for the holidays and stuff and oh just for the holidays yeah and it's been like uh, I feel it tired good, right? it tastes really good I mean grandma's <laughs> cooking is like uh, do you know what lumpia is no what's that oh my god it's like a Filipino egg roll and my grandma makes the best one that sounds world. fancy a Filipino oh. egg roll yeah oh it's not that what's fancy. in a Filipino egg roll it's just because I'm thinking something way different than it. no <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Sheila, stop. <laughs> it's like at the show tonight. I want to see a Filipino. <laughs> I'm a Filipino egg roll. No. Is that racially it's, motivated? <laughs> it's like, like just that. meat wrapped with the egg roll wrapper. Or just meat wrapped. Say it again. Yes, that's what it is. Okay, you Good. heard me. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. Okay. A lot. Of, everybody's been talking about it this week. Who is the king of R&B? Oh, man. I don't know. That's what the subject of conversation yeah, has been? Yeah, right now, everyone is fighting Jacquees. Jacquees, he started the whole conversation oh. and um, claims to be the king of R&B of this generation. Oh, I and didn't check my local World yeah. Star update, so I good, didn't see good what's for going you. on yet. But the king of R&B of this mm -hmm. generation? Yes. I think there's two kings of R&B, right? One, controversially, uh, if you want to say that, R. Kelly, just a fact, he's just done the most. R&B? talent scope secondarily uh, you say yeah usher yes Just, they weren't even saying his name yeah how do you fight that how do you even make that argument and right like today who's who's done enough uh, who's done enough who who's put wait. out records at that level they can, uh, that the conversation should be entertaining in that way. I'm just asking, I'm yeah, sort of asking no, a question. Yeah, no, the top three that come to my mind during this this controversial topic are Chris Brown, Usher, and Trey Songs. Oh, Chris Brown, Usher, and Trey Songs. Yeah. Those, those are within the conversation? Th th that's my opinion. 
Chris Brown, Usher, who's done more than Usher? Um, I don't know. I think Breezy's up there. You think Chris Brown's done more done more than Usher? What do you mean done more? I don't know. Let's I let's do. create the I metric. Think, yeah. You, people are just saying things and there's no metric. Meaning there's no measurement tool. What's the measurement tool? Just how you feel on a Wednesday? That's true. It's very hard. Everyone just throws their opinion out there. I guess for me it's like creating a strong fan base, still being able to put out music that people care about, still being able to go on a tour that people still want to see. Mm. Um, I'll say Usher's a little older than Chris Brown. Chris, you know, he has a few more years. Um, but I think those are the things I would say. I don't think it has anything to do with age. Uh -huh. I just think it has to, for me, if I'm using, if I'm saying who's the king of whatever, I'm using a body of work or who's the queen. I'm using yeah. a body of work that I can refer to and I can say this has made this cultural impact. Yeah. And I was a, I was a child, I was a fucking, I mean, but it was confessions. That just changed everything. I don't even know. I think I, I think I had a girlfriend and I fake cried to her because I was trying Stop. to keep the relationship going. I was like, let it burn, you know? Like I let a tear drop. I definitely let a tear drop. It ain't work though. But I think, we're not gonna debate, but tried, you know, Chris Brown's self-titled album for people who are probably a little younger probably feel that same way about like how Confessions was to them. I got you. I mean, I'm, I'm in that pocket of people, yeah. but it was Confessions yeah. for yeah. me. No, Confessions was amazing. Yeah. Um, I gotta say Miguel too. Miguel is really, really Miguel cool. is incredible. <laughs> Miguel is incredible. Why wasn't he in the conversation too? Um, I just forgot to say his name. Damn, that's No, they were saying crazy names. They What's were, a crazy name? What's like um, a name you definitively are like, no. Well, Jock, Jacquees, he was the first person. So you so. think Jacquees is a no? No, not at all. all right. Like, you're still probably, you're not doing arenas. You're not, your pull isn't that big. Like, your pull is still like the 13 year old stepdaughter I have, you know, like, that's who wants to see you. I don't want to see step you. Stepdaughter? Yeah. So, you got a stepdaughter? Yeah. You a married person? Engaged. Oh, <laughs> let me see this. Oh, niggas love you. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a whole I love you situation. You be Filipino egg rolling or no? Oh my God. Okay, last question <laughs> is, you have a new album dropping January New 25th. collection, yeah. New collection, please uh -huh. tell me about it. It's called Ghetto Lenny's Love Songs for Christians. All right, what can we expect? It's, it's ignorant. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm it's excited. what I think love songs sound like for strippers. Ooh, yeah, so if you yes. think about what strippers would fall in love to. Slaps. I mean. I'm ready for that. Yeah. I'm ready for that. So in the lineage, so in the project is, it's a winter collection. So mm -hmm. I think of music in terms of collections. Collection one, which was my debut collection, in the same way Alexander Wang or, yeah. um, or McQueen would have a collection. It's not... And fancy title is a collection. It's their fourth collection, the ninth collection, mm -hmm. the twentieth. Collection one was my first one, and this is a winter collection. So it sort of encapsulates this feeling, this emotion of what's happening right now. So it's super urgent. It's cold. It's brash. It's hard. It's ignorant, and I want to marry every stripper I can meet to it. I'm ready for that. Yeah. Well, where can they follow you to keep up with everything you have going on? Uh, St. John, wherever you listen to things, wherever you click and type in, wherever you watch porn, I might be on a porn site. I might. S-A-I-N-T-J-H-N. I like that. No O. No O. Don't insult me. All right. Thank you I want to be on a porn site. <laughs> hey, pull up the Young M.A. porn. Oh, my God. Let's watch it. <laughs>